Uh, good morning, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you. It's uh, an honour for me to rise in this House today and to speak to this uh, legislation, Bill C-244. And uh, this is a good day. It's not a super common day in this House when uh, all parties come together and, for the most part, agree on the general generality or principles of a bill. But I think this happens to be one of those days, and uh, that's where Canadians are, and we're here to serve Canadians to be their voice in getting things done. This particular bill seeks to amend the Copyright Act, and I think whenever we do something like that, uh, we have to be careful to protect the rights of, uh, of producers, of artists, of uh, inventors of things that have uh, copyrights. And uh, so we do this uh, carefully, I think, but at the same time, we do this keeping in mind the consumer and the taxpayer. And uh, so I would like to uh, commend my honorable colleague, the member from Richmond Centre, for his fine work on this legislation, for bringing this legislation forward. And I'm glad we have the opportunity this morning to discuss that. I hope we're able to, uh, at the end of the day, once this has gone through committee and comes back to the House for its final reading, that we will be able to work in a spirit of camaraderie and uh, do other things that Canadians are asking us to do, and that's to provide tax relief and, more importantly, affordability. And that's something that we can't lose sight of here, is the whole aspect of affordability. And Bill C-44 seeks to amend exactly that and to uh, amend the, the sections of the Copyright Act to uh, chiefly where existing legislation deals with the subjects of diagnosis, maintenance and repair. I would like to focus my comments mainly this morning on, the, on, on how this particular piece of legislation would impact the agriculture industry, serving on the Agriculture Committee, being in an area that is uh, very uh, heavily centred on agriculture, I think this is very applicable. And so it's through that lens of affordability, as well as addressing a few of the concerns brought forward by manufacturers. I think uh, if we were to put this bill in a nutshell into every, everyday language, we could say, if you buy something, you own it. And as an owner of, of, of a product, whether it's an electronic device, whether it's a uh, household device like a dishwasher or a fridge or a stove, or if it's an automobile or if it's a piece of farm machinery or an implement or a piece of construction machinery or a highway tractor, you as the owner have the right to repair it. And uh, assuming you have the knowledge and the ability to do that, of course there's always the cost benefit of whether you can repair something more cost effectively than the, uh, the dealer which represents the, uh, the OEM or the original equipment manufacturer. So if you don't personally have that knowledge, you should be able to travel a reasonable distance to have it repaired by someone who does have that knowledge, who does have that expertise for a reasonable price. Then there was a time if you were a farmer in this country that you were also a mechanic. And if that tractor or combine wasn't working for you, uh, you had to find some way to jig it up to repair it. Our, our seasons for planting are short and they can sometimes be very time sensitive and our seasons for harvesting can be short and time sensitive and you need to take the crop off when it's mature, when it's ripe and the when conditions allow you to do that. You know, just this past week I had to take, I live on a bit of an acreage and so I have a John Deere tractor and I'm for the most part very happy with my tractor but my tractor needed a little bit of work. And so I took it to my John Deere dealer this past week and I got him to give it a fall tune-up and to do, uh, put it back into uh, proper working order the way it should be. And I went and I picked it up and I looked at the repair bill and, uh, and I looked at it and I thought, wow, man, I could have done all this work myself for a lot less money. But of course, there's that cost benefit. I don't have the time to do it. Uh, you know, with our parliamentary responsibilities, even the times when we were in our riding, we we're very, very busy in the constituency doing constituency work. Uh, but a farmer, an owner of a product like a John Deere tractor should be able, if he has the ability and the time and the knowledge, to fix that piece of equipment himself. And that's what this legislation seeks to address. To, uh, that uh, not all repairs should be uh, proprietary to the equipment, uh, original equipment manufacturer, but it should be incumbent upon the owner to repair that uh, piece of equipment in the most economical way possible. So a farmer was by necessity a jack of all trades and as a result of this necessity they possessed the wherewithal, the knowledge to fix and maintain their own equipment. Now, with major technological advancements and computerization that we've seen in vehicles, farm equipment and uh, appliances over the past two decades, the ability to repair is becoming more and more difficult for farmers 
Uh, and, and progress is sometimes a double-edged sword. You know, some, when that tractor or combine breaks down in the field today, uh, you need the proper diagnosis equipment to plug it into the ECM to get a reading to tell you what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. And often it's beyond uh, the capability or the scope of what a farmer is able to do. Uh, but he should have the ability to call his local repairman that does have the tools to plug into, uh, into the port and to get the proper diagnostics which would allow him then to repair his equipment and to do it in a way that allows him to expeditiously take his crop off the field. Instead of waiting for a technician that may be four or five hours away, maybe tied up uh, with another customer fixing another urgent need, he should be able to, uh, to have a, a variety of of resources available at his disposal to, uh, to fix the, the equipment. So new technology is great, but it also drives up prices and it makes repairs more difficult and all the more so while farmers have only one option and that's what this uh, legislation seeks to do and that's to create options and a, and a diversity of, uh, of responses and resources for farmers to access repair for the equipment. We don't think through this legislation, I think all parliamentarians agree that uh, f for the diagnostic repair and maintenance of a machine, it should be a one source option for repairs because that's often a lot of situations, especially in the farming community, not a practical solution. Farmers often live very far away from a repair facility and then, uh, but in their own community may have uh, a local mechanic who has the ability and, uh, and, and the wherewithal to fix their equipment and they should have the option to do that. So as an MP for a rural riding, I must mention the fact that farming isn't cheap. In fact, it's very, very capital intensive and requires a huge investment. And uh, speaking this past summer, the cost of a new combine is upwards of a million dollars. And it's loaded with technology and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's good, it's efficient and it's productive, but it does cost a lot of money to get into farming. And so farmers need to be very cost sensitive and, uh, and uh, be able to control their costs. We know what's happened to the price of seed and now with fertilizer, uh, uh, which is, all of those prices have seemingly skyrocketed in the last two years, uh, in, and taxes, in, including the carbon tax, Madam Speaker, uh, for which uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that the members in the, on the government side of the House will, will be able to support Bill C-234 from the member from uh, Bruce here on Bruce which would provide full exemption of the carbon tax for all aspects of farming, including the heating and cooling of livestock facilities, the powering of irrigation pumps, and also the powering of grain dryers to dry the grain. Those are things that are missing, and uh, the carbon tax is a punishing tax, and it's been a punishing tax to agriculture producers. And this Liberal government, Madam Speaker, I don't know if you know this, but April the 2nd, or April of, uh, of this next year coming up, this Liberal government seeks to triple triple, triple the carbon tax. And that's gonna hit farmers right where it hurts. And farmers can't absorb that cost. The, if, they're, if they're to absorb the cost, there's only one uh, possible outcome, and that's that the cost of food is gonna increase. And so that's something that we need to be very cognizant of, that farmers have to pass along the cost of production to the end user. And the end user is all of us. We're the consumer, we're the people that eat the food. So uh, let's, uh, let's keep that in mind uh, as it comes up that uh, the carbon tax, according to the Liberal plan, will be tripling, tripling, tripling this coming April. So Bill C-234 will exempt agriculture fuels from all carbon tax, and so I'm hoping as Bill C-234 finds its way through committee that it'll get broad support as this Bill C-244 is getting here in this House today. So there, I'm gonna skip over a few things here, but uh, one, one more story I heard from a farmer who had crossed the border just recently to pick up parts uh, in the United States. Uh, and it used to be that CBSA would simply log the part and he was on his way. And now he says they insist that I have all the product numbers ahead of time entered online. And I told him I don't know where to find that information, how to do that. And they told me to get a farm broker to do that. So uh, now he has to go, expect it to spend $3, $300 on a trip to see a farm broker for a $10 part. He says it's just crazy. He says, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this bill, C-244, would allow that farmer to fix his own equipment at home uh, at a reasonable cost. And I think this is a bill that we want to get behind as Conservatives. We want to support the, the Liberal member who brought this legislation forward. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to it.